Oh, oh dear me. What can I say? We're like live. We're chatting like two old fishwives at back of stage here. We forget our own cues. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slotcar Shenanigans, bi weekly show on a Thursday with Rahul here, Conquest Racing Club, and myself, Pete Brown, Track Fans TV. So, Rahul, what are you saying, brother? How's your week been? It's all good. It's all good. Week's been good. Uh, a bit busy. But with some work, but otherwise, you know, life okay. goes on. Lots of good so, stuff. Put a video out yesterday, I saw. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? I think so. Oh, I put out the two old school slotteds that I had from 2008 uh, or nice. thereafter. And uh, yeah, I've been opening up some of the older boxes that I have of slot cars. Like from yeah. when I first started. So, yeah, looking to run some of them this Saturday. All analog cars. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. And uh, we had that live race last night with uh, Christian versus Hulk. It was kind of funny. but I need uh, to watch it. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, so we've been doing a lot of live racing, digital racing. Um, yeah, trying to get my friends back up to speed on stock cars and yeah so yeah that's what on? we're doing um you know <laughs> it takes time uh um, they're hilarious so yeah. hulk genius yeah <laughs> this weekend did, i got a challenge yeah i got a challenge lined up for the two of them this weekend so it should be interesting you guys see the video next week sometime i think oh, you're yeah. gonna just like leave us hanging like that seriously <laughs> yeah so uh you know i'm doing this like beginner series right and we're talking about scholectric this week and i oh, happen yeah. to have a brand new in a box scholectric set so i'm gonna give the two of them which one i'm not telling you that come on Pete. there's gotta be something <laughs> so uh yeah i'm gonna give them uh you know i'm gonna time them as they set it up and get it running and then we're gonna run some races on the scholectric track to see how it works out Okay. Are you overlaying the Carrera with it? Uh, actually, my Carrera track, if uh, has, there's a certain section that can create about a 9 foot by 10 foot layer on top of it. Uh, nice. And that becomes a flat layer that you can build something on top of. So that's where they'll build it on. Uh, just like right. I used to do for the GRL. It's basically just yep. what I was replacing with the GRL. Yeah, so I thought it would be a fun experiment to see the two of them put together a track from scratch. They've never seen a track before. I'm taking away the instructions, so they have no, they have no clue. Uh, we'll watch them stumble and bumble it through and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I could just feel my ears burning there. When well, talking about you, need, you need to get sulk frustrated a bit. Before all the, <laughs> before he all woke the up, he's frustrated. <laughs> Yeah, before all the cool stuff comes out, you know. So just yeah. tell him he's not getting paid to build it, and it'll be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is true. Yeah. Excellent. So you're doing that? Cool. Yeah. So and then I always shoot like slow motion footage, and there's going to be jumps on this track, so we'll see. It might be fun to catch some cars in the air. So okay. I'm get used Airborne. to that. Yeah. I haven't done jumps and then uh, Harry inspired me because uh, he built that uh, crawler uh, hill for himself, right? I don't know if you've been watching Harry's um, contest, but he's got the uh, RC crawler, and I have about four oh, or really? five of those crawlers. Uh, so <laughs> we are planning to build this huge mountain <laughs> that leads. I don't know. My so my stock car track is about uh, thirty-two inches off the floor, right? So yeah. we're building this huge mountain that goes 32 inches up vertically that we can crawl up with the crawlers onto the track. So it should be fun. We'll figure it out. So yeah, we're messing around with stuff now. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. We'll keep tuned to that. We'll look forward yeah. to seeing some of that stuff coming through. It's a bit different. Yeah, it's just I like it. stuff. Messing yeah, around. Man. Yeah. And have you still got uh, your palette doing a bit of editing with you as well? Take the burden off. Yeah, so he does all the shorts, right? So every time you see the shorts come out, I don't compile the shorts. I just shoot the footage. 
I send it off to Christian, yeah. and he releases two shorts a week. Uh, they've been okay. doing really well. So, yeah. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah, I like yeah. them. They're pretty good. Pretty good. So, a busy week so far. We're filming and editing and... Actually, I oh, have dude. like I've shot about five cars already there in pipeline, so it's not like I'm I'm really ahead of the curve when it comes to filming. Uh, but there's always you know when when your friends right. get involved, it gets funny because they'll come up with an idea and we'll just run with it, and we'll figure it out. So how do you pick the slot cars that you choose for your episodes? Which I always uh... wondered this. Like, I want do you go to the wall, and you're like. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, 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 na, 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 na. Or do you go, I oh, know exactly what I want. It's going to. I never know what I want. Um, it's funny. On Saturdays, I always decide on the day what I'm going to run. I, I know what I want to run. So like last weekend, I knew that I'd done enough analog and I wanted to do digital. So for the past three, the past two weekends yeah. has been digital, right? On Saturday nights. Yep. And then I was like, uh, do I want to remove new analog cars from the box or do I want to just run some of my old cars that I haven't seen in a while? So that's what I've been going to. So I, I opened up all the boxes of the old cars. Like I have crates that have cars that I open <laughs> inside. So I was like, you yeah. know what? I'll pull out this one and whatever is in there, I'll run it in. Uh, I run maybe like six or seven cars on a Saturday night. So whatever it is, cool. I'll pick the first six or seven, run them, and then the next six or seven, run them. And that will get through that box, and then we'll go to another box and keep on doing that. Um, opening up cars you, straight from the wall. Did you forget yeah, because, what you've got in the crates? No, I remember my cars. I, yes and no. I found an SRC. <laughs> I, I, I thought this was the only SRC I had. Turns out I have a couple yeah. more that I had bought. <laughs> long time ago so that's uh that's kind <laughs> at of at the funny. bottom of the crate you're like oh look at that no i was like what is this oh it says sr what's what that <laughs> i was like oh it's an it's SRC. It's... Coming off it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah um yeah new cars off the wall has been a little bit of a challenge as you can tell right like every brand has like uh has had some issues so far reverse thought uh, Scale Auto had an issue the other night. Scalectric had an issue. Um, Carrera. I just removed the 60 year anniversary Carrera BMW and I was going to run right on a track and the engine was, uh, the motor was burnt out. Uh, for some reason, it gave me a big smell. So, wow. yeah. So, like, you know, like, we'll talk about this later anyway. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's been. It's it's cool to take them off the wall and try and run them, but you know, like I know every soccer needs to be looked at and tuned. So that's so if I'm gonna do like yeah, when I did the K- that, I was not talking about all that jazz, just like okay. you How go right, so like them? GT three cars, yeah, steam in, where are they? And then you have to search for them, or it's like <laughs> yeah, oh, I want these the specific point. cars, and then it's a real search. Mate. Yeah, I think um if I have a plan, it's easier. So, like when I said I want to do the KTM's, it was easy. I knew I had to remove all four KTM's. I had to go get, but then finding them is also an issue. Because yesterday, uh, Christian was over and he's like, "Oh, I want to race a Ford GT." I was like, "Ford GT? I know I have a couple of those. Where are they?" <laughs> I was running all around <laughs> the basement looking for them. Uh, so it gets a little bit tricky. Yeah. But... What's the car right in front of you right now on your desk? Look down, pick up that car. What is it? Oh, nice. My Bentley. My one and only Bentley. Bentley. Yeah. You know I love the Bentleys. That is it. It's like a show and tell. (laughs) (laughs) That's only because I'm softening these tires up. So I'm like plopping the oil on it and rubbing it in every couple of days. Yeah. Awesome. So I think there's a lot of people in the chat. We should say some highs. Yep. So should we start from the start of the show? Uh, so you mean the take nail. it to the top? Take right. it to the top. All right. So obviously it's Daz is, is the first one in. But I think yeah, he's yeah, going to watch it back later. 
And then you got Rob Sale. Yep. And then we have uh, Aid is here. And yeah. Andy and Ruben. Yeah. Mr. Steve D is Justin. in the house. Yeah, that's right. That's Mr. D, Rahul. Drag racing extraordinaire. Yeah, I've heard a lot. Who's this guy? Some idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. <laughs> this is shenanigans. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, Dahi and Sasha. Yeah. I think Sasha is is here as well separately or Yeah. Yeah. Carlton. Yep, Carlton. Mark journals Mark, here. Marky boy. Marky. Yeah, Mark. Yep. Keith. Keith. Keith in the house. Uh Bo's in. there we go. Bo is here. John D's here. And then Travis there he is, is here. Good day, mate. Good day, yeah. John. They are and Harry's indeed. here. Shotgun Dave's here as well. That's nice. Nice to be here, Shotgun. We missed Dan. Look. Oh, Dan's we here. missed Dan. I I moving too Dan. fast. Moving Dan too is fast. Here, mate. Too fast. Yeah. Dan's Under here, the radar. Too. Good to hear from you, Dan. Nice to have your company, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, I think we've a awesome Dave. Nice one. And Harry yeah. and Bo. I think we covered everyone. Yep, cool. We are there. So good. Uh <laughs> awesome. I'll tell you what I've been up to this week. Uh, Mrs. Brown went away on Tuesday. Uh, she's flown away to uh, back home to get some dental work done. So me and the boys are home alone. And incidentally, the the kitchen table has been moved out and I've gone, got something set up, just playing around with some digital in the dining room. Amazing. This would <laughs> never fly if she was around. This is like the best ever. I'm going to go upstairs, going to be straight on the track, digital racing in the house so nice and warm in there so that's yeah. been exciting today uh a bit of editing so a bit of editing on track wood track lighting video that i'm doing um just need to do a couple of bits more and then that's ready uh and then other than that work just working to getting through it and uh and we're all off tomorrow because it's the long uh long easter weekend something yeah. I don't know, whatever. It's about chocolate nowadays. Get in there. Yeah. Uh, do, you like yeah we're all, do I like Easter eggs? Yeah. Do you have them there? Yeah, they have them here. Well, I don't know. You're in do Canada. I, or, do I... <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, we have an Easter we spend <laughs> too, Pete. And uh, yes, they do yeah. have Easter eggs and they have all the chocolates and the fanfare. <laughs> um, unfortunately, my daughter is allergic to milk products, so she has no chocolates. Um, so, yeah, we 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 do not have chocolates in the house, unfortunately. Okay. Nor do we have is, ice cream, is, nor do we have pizza, nor do we have any. Is your daughter going to watch this show back? Does she watch this show, your daughter? <laughs> Uh, if I don't watch any of my shows, I'd jump out of my seat, Pete. <laughs> awesome. Right. I'll get you an egg in and I'll hold it for you for the slot festival. <laughs> Excellent. <Cool. laughs> there you go, mate. So I'll go and uh, get one tomorrow before they sell out by people panic buying at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> Harry's so funny. Harry says uh, they don't have the chocolate here. They do chicken yeah. eggs. Very strange and very sad. <laughs> Yeah, they do in Serbia. They hard boil the eggs and then they paint them. Like they yeah. dye them, paint them. That's what they do there. They don't do chocolate there. I mean, it's travesty. Yeah. Um, yeah, we used to do that uh, in Kenya as well. Hard boil eggs and then paint them and then hide them around. And all you got was a hard boiled egg. Nah. Yeah. Not interested. <laughs> About six of them. And then later on in the evening, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> No proper like rumble in the jungle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what Rob Sales got ten days off. 
I know. I, I, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's got a good proper weekend. Good, Dan. I'm so pleased that things are looking good for you, mate. That is uh, excellent. Oh, hang on a second. What's Punchinello time again? I have no idea. Right. So, I'll tell you what we're going to talk about in um, today. It's going to be the day. Start singing like Oasis then. So, last week we covered um, Carrera Digital. Not last week. Two weeks ago. The last show. Let's say the last show. Yeah. So, the last show we covered Carrera Digital, which you did a fine job of sort of showing us what you can get, what what's doing, uh, and sort of give people who don't really know a lot about it a bit more insight, which was cool. And uh, I wanted to do the same with Skelectric. And I tell you what, right, doing a little bit, a little bit of research on it. Yes. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty good stuff. I know, like, I grew my channel on Skelectric and I used the ARC Pro. The app race control is what ARC stands for. Um, I probably didn't appreciate what it could do because I was so new back into the hobby. And at the time, I was all right. I had a bit of cash, you know, so I was like, yeah, I'll get ARC Pro, get that one in, digital racing. Didn't really appreciate because I didn't, I didn't know slot cars existed i only knew skelectric yeah so i'm like playing this thing and i'm thinking oh this is good and then i started to find out more about the hobby and i was like oh, okay if i'd now known what i know about the hobby and then i come back and i look at the arc pro digital it's right up there it is right up there it's got some seriously good gameplay some good functionality and you'll see more. I will show you some stuff now if, if you fancy having a look. And um, I've got to do, I've got a digital set, which is what I've set, set up upstairs. And I'll be doing like a three part review because I started to do sort of some filming on it today. It's way too vast just to cover in one episode. Honestly, you'll be like, ah, kill me now by like <laughs> 20 minutes. So I'm going to chop it into three episodes, three videos so that you can come and see the bit that appeals to you most. So one full video will be on literally functionality and setting it up and getting it going. So Before there you go. Before you go any further, guess who's dropped in? Ah, uh, Mag fans! What's up, Ian and Doug? How are you? That is Ian right there. Because oh. I was in their uh, video earlier where they had a uh, race game on yeah. um and uh doug comes in as doug thinks galactric whereas ian has got the mr logo that's how you tell so I've, i'm on top of it rahul <laughs> excellent as long as you're on top of it all that matters yes mate <laughs> have it <laughs> brilliant so um and the other thing was, um, just before we crack on with like having a look at some scaly digital, was Paul at Slot Car 2021 got some mold on his magnetic racing buildings. And he did a video of how to get rid of that mold. He treated it and it come up like brand new. Did you see it? I have not. Yes. No, not yet. Okay. Yeah. He got mold like from it because his stuff's in the garage. He's gone to check it and there's mold on it like proper fur. And anyway, he's done like a video of how to, he's tread it and he's cleaned it and it looks mint. So if anyone else has got mold on their like um, their wood buildings, it's totally fixable. And then you know what to do to uh, prevent it coming back. Yeah, that's good. Good. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, then. Shall we? We shall. Let's go for it. <laughs> Take me through this electric stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. We should have put this up before. This was our cue to so find out what's been going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so professional. Honestly, sometimes it hurts. 
<laughs> yeah, we're just ahead of the game. Head of the game. Oh all. my word! I tell you, if they if they let us live on air, we'd be dangerous. <laughs> 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 oh, hang on, we're live on air. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, brilliant! There you go. Look, Skelectric Digital. Oosh. So, did so... you get the big set when you bought your Arc Pro set, or you got the you get the full car set? Because I'm looking to get uh, digital. I, I want to get this electric arc pro set as well. But I'm looking at yeah. the four car set. Um, so, no. Yes and no. Uh, no, because when I got back into the hobby, I just had a standard golf racing set. And from there, I'd learned about digital. Because when you go on Skelectric website to check out what cars and stuff and look all around there, you stumble over digital and you think hello what's this about and then you research and you find out about arc pro or whatever it may be um so i bought a standalone unit i think i bought it from ebay which is actually right here yeah. i'm actually just in the process of doing up the uh rails so i've been using auto sold to clean that up and get that going um so that so no i've not ever bought it new as a set but i have just been sent a set by skelectric to uh review and introduce to viewers on our channel digital skelectric racing because they're conscious that i've done it over the channel's growth but i've not actually shown a new set and how it looks feels how it's set up what what you can do and the great fun you can have with it so that's what I've set up upstairs and it's totally it's lush it's lush setting up brand new track out of the box I mean it's so good but so there you go so no I'd never bought it new before but I have now had a new set if that makes sense yeah totally <clears throat> rock and roll we are on one so so I'd like to just share a few pointers about what you can expect with Skelectric Digital. Well, firstly, choice. Um, so I'm not really au fait with other brands, and I'll just keep them out of it for the time being. I think Carrera is a, a valid one to bring into the conversation because it's an equal toy brand. Would you agree? Yeah, well, we did Carrera last week. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, oh, last episode, sorry um yeah yeah so to, yeah definitely i mean there's there is more there are more digital systems coming up obviously as yeah. it's more popular popular as well in racing and etc so um i don't know if digital anyway we can talk about the toy and hobby brand kind of thing yeah. a bit so, later but yeah yeah so Before. you have here so i think the one on the bottom right hand side the world gt yeah i think from memory that's the one that dave kennedy got sent to okay. test out along with a uh, james bond set the one in the top left is uh the one that i'm going to be looking at upstairs so you got four oh, cars so it's the four that. car one yeah that's the one yeah. i'm looking for the okay one. it's good i'll send you some pictures in a bit Cool. um and it of takeover i absolutely love this i tell you my, my missus sent me a message about 20 minutes ago saying she was going to bed so definitely not watching this and we'll see that the kitchen <laughs> and diner has been ransacked for skelectric track um <laughs> and also good news rahul uh albert and will for coming on saturday so oh, no. <laughs> perfect timing yeah i'm gonna take the spoilers it's, off of all of these cars it's the end of the gt right cars oh no yeah no it'll be fine honestly i got mustang uh, got an mg got a vantage and i got a C8. yeah no. yeah they're not gonna get mullered what's the um, worst that can happen uh pile them up and <laughs> smash into them <laughs> yeah yeah so, nah, it's um, gonna be fun yeah well, like well that's what they're They've sent it to us for a review, haven't they? So, actually, yeah. only Albert can play it because it's an eight plus. But who's oh, yeah. going to tell Wilfie can't play it? You know, while it's right there and everyone's having fun. 
That's irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it should be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that is a good question, Daihi. What is ev- what would everybody go for out of there? Because I think it's choice of car uh, or s- size of the track. To be fair, the bottom two don't have as uh, have as long a track as the top left one. Yeah, it's a long track. <laughs> 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 oh dear so and the nice thing is is the cars are already digitally chipped as well the chips are in them so i can hopefully all being well i'll be just racing digital in a bit and you can add to it as well so you can use extension packs right yeah so that's that's one good thing about skeletric digital is you've got choice and you know you get everything that you need with it you don't have to buy extra stuff to get it working so you've got bluetooth controllers you've got the power supply you've got phone holder your you've got your power base it's all ready to go so that's good so it's all in the box um controllers pretty technical i don't know if this is the same with carrera this is what i meant when i said bringing carrera in the conversation because this controller vibrates and it does different types of vibration, man. It's next level to whatever the situation you've got with your car, be it yeah. flat tires, be it weather, be it whatever. It, it, it's like a different like sensation. Like what? What? Who does that? <laughs> Fair play to them. But yeah, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. There's a ton of stuff. Hold on. I'm not getting into it, but yeah, so that surprised me. That was a nice surprise because I didn't know about that. I knew that the controller vibrated, but I didn't realize it had different modes for different out situations in the race. Very clever. Uh, and then, of course, if you've got some old cars knocking about, you can do a retrofit and add some digital chips to your old cars. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure how this works with other brands, but you know you can research that in your own time. But I think that that uh, you've fitted these before, haven't you, Raul? I have. No, so I don't have Carrera. Di- I have Carrera Digital. I don't have Collector Digital, but the chip, uh, the Easy Fit C8515 almost looks like the Carson chip which is the the digital chipset you use for your selected cars to run on Carrera Digital so looks about similar now Bo said yeah. something here about last episode I said Germans are stubborn or ignorant I, I didn't mean that that way if I did uh, but I what I did say was they do not have a variety of digital switching curve radiuses they only have the one in 60s that's all I said, and I wish they would do more radiuses in that, in the switch lane curves, because that will allow yep. us to add more variety to the track. That's all I meant by that. I was never calling any. Yeah, I do not mean to call no. anyone ignorant or stubborn. So, just wanted to clarify. He only that. calls me that. That's exclusive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you're and I do there. know that Carrera is made in Austria, and I do understand it's an Austrian brand. So. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to dwell on that, but I just wanted to clarify it. That was not my intent. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. Well done, mate. Yeah. What's Carl saying here? The so Aqua you... is one mostly analog with wireless mm-hmm. controls. I think the digital is suited to a larger layout to make it make the most out of pit lanes and lane changing. My layout is only 10 by 6. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, so I'm very curious uh, to know, Pete. Uh, so the one thing that I wanted to do with my Skelectric track, and if I went digital, uh, you know, Skelectric yeah. has a four-way cross, uh, four-way lane chain, like the intersections. Yeah, yeah, crossover. Yeah, the crossovers. Uh, can yeah. I integrate that into the digital track system? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's all workable, right? Yeah. Yeah, because that's what I, I wanted to do. On that. 
<laughs> yeah, nice, nice, nice. Because that's really what I wanted to build my Skeletric layout to be my Lego City layout. So complete, like the, all the terrain would be Lego City stuff. Um, yeah, that'd be well. awesome. Yeah. You can Should use, you... Uh, definitely use the crossover. Any any of the other bits that you've ever used, you can use with digital. Nice. Totally. And maybe if you're feeling a bit fruity, you could get a load of the singular bits of track and do some kind of like, rally spaghetti extravaganza in the middle of the track cutting oh, nice. around some buildings and then joins the track at a later stage so you get a choice of which way which way you go through your your uh whether you go through the inner city or whether you just take the perimeter and then you join up again at some point maybe at the crossroad yeah that would be kind of cool i i uh, with carrera go you can do that uh, that's what yeah. the whole idea came about. And then I noticed this collector does follow that pattern. So it's almost like the larger version of the Carrera Go stuff in Skeletric. Uh, and that's why I went to Skeletric for my Lego City layout. So uh, getting digital for that would be where I'm, I want to go next. So interesting to know that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're getting a bit of an Austrian German showdown here. Yeah, I love Didn't it. Mean to start and that. Abe, yeah. well, <laughs> I'm sorry, Harry. That's genius. <laughs> we know Latvia is not in Russia, mate. <laughs> Thomas, my good friend, was uh, Latvia. He always used to said people think he thought he was Russian half the time. <laughs> <laughs> that is a thing, mate. That is actually a thing, Harry. Brilliant. Dan's in. Hi, Dan. What's up, uh, Dan? Rob thought that was funny as well. He's got a sense of humor out, Rob, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you can chip it up, mate. You can get it going on uh, to older cars, which is exciting. And then, right, awesome. Uh, we'll talk about a bit about software. Not too heavy because it's, you know, a light-hearted bantery show. Just cracking on and stuff, talking stock cars every couple of weeks. If you like what you're seeing, hit the like button for us. That would be sound. Uh, most appreciated. But what we've got is two types of software, which is the Skeletric Arc, the app race control uh, on the left. If you're going to your app store or your Apple store, uh, wherever you get your apps from, you'll find that Skeletric looks like that. And then you have another app called Magic Arc App Race Control, which I'm not going to delve into today. Maybe we should do like a future episode, video, or whatever we call this live stream on sort of some features of softwares and what might be best for different types of people. Nothing heavy, just five minutes, just a little flash in the pan. What do you reckon? Okay. Yeah, right, like... So um yeah, I don't think we're going very technical into this. I just wanted to know, no. you know, what the differences are, or the similarities are between the two systems. Yeah, oh, BS is it. Hello, chaps, chapesses. How's chaps. it going, guys? <laughs> hey, Steve, how are you? There you um, go. So, Magic Race, Magic Arp is a really versatile piece of kit which Bluetooths just like Skeletric app to your power base. And you've got options. So I know a few of them I've it, used uh, it before. Mm -hmm. Before you go any further, uh, so the one that's from Skeletor, is that free? Yes. Is it a free software? And then the Magic Arc, do you have to pay for it? No, it's free. It's free as well. Very good. Yeah, I wouldn't put up no paid software. We haven't got any money because we buy slot cars. We know <laughs> this. <laughs> well, Smart Race is the Smart Race app that we use for Collector. I'm sorry. So smart race app that we use for Carrera <laughs> is a paid app. <laughs> so um yeah. if you want all the bells and whistles. So just just wanted to clarify <sighs> that. Well, that is a good thing that you say there, you know, because and actually I would have had that, I should have had this. I know we'll bring this up when we talk later. Um remind me about Skelectrix uh recent sort of share selling to Mike Astley. To talk okay. about it later no um, when we're dealing with sort of other other matters so yeah so i think skeletra will possibly charge for this in the future if they see uh <clears throat> whatchamacallit 
uh Carrera getting away with charging for extra software. I don't think well, it's not Carrera much. charging, okay? So, uh, correct because Smart Race is a third party. Oh, I beg your pardon. Sorry, yeah. Carrera. I didn't yeah, realize. Carrera does not charge for that. That's a it's just a third party app built by an independent ah, okay. software developer, right? Um, right. But it just happens to be the one that we we prefer to the Carrera one. Uh, so uh, BS Talks has a good question on Skeletri power base. Can you push a button to go from digital to analog? Is that correct? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And uh, let me demonstrate because I have one right here. Here we go. Right. So power base. Yeah. Side of power base. Switch. Okay. Analog, digital, analog, digital, analog, digital, analog, digital. Right. We got analog, it. We got it. Stop it. Stop digital. it. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how long I could keep going before you're like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, yes, it does. It does. It's a great bit of kit. Yeah, so SCX charges extra for their own software subscription service too. Okay. Yeah. So you're getting a good deal with Skelectric with the free software. And the free software is good. It yeah. is really good. Um, so we'll dwell on Magic Arc another day because uh, we're doing this, you know, a spotlight for Skelectric here. And here you go. So just to give you an idea of what you can see on your various screens on your phone or your tablet or your laptop screen monitor whatever you're using this is sort of just a snapshot of different kinds of things that will pop up whether you're on tires whether you whether you're on fuel whether you're on curse which is like a turbo boost because when you're in digital mode the power supply gives you 80 percent of your power to your car and then when you build up the curse and you've got the boost option it gives you a hundred percent and it's really weird Rahul because when you go and race in digital you get used to how the car drives and then you flip it to analog and it's a hundred percent of the power and it is literally like bullets so oh gone and you're like back in the kid zone again like oh that is so much fun as your four GT GT is like hanging out at the front of your garage like <laughs> Oh, so you technically you're driving at 50 percent majority of the time depending on the track length because if it only gives you a boost at 100 percent for three seconds right uh yeah 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 but it's 80 percent you're driving at okay it says limited to 80 percent when fully charged the gear 100 percent oh it looks like okay cool yeah interesting yeah i know that um i know correct goals also has that boost button on their controllers uh you need to use that if you're doing loops on your track so right. uh, yeah. you have to boost the car to get it through the loop so i think it's running the same sort of kind of um power switch kind of thing it's pretty interesting um so have you raced digital yet uh pete sorry what happened <laughs> it's my lad in it oh yeah what happened <laughs> he's on the wrong train oh no <laughs> idiots anyway i love my children uh ask me again sorry slightly distracted uh, we'll go into it. He's going to get a red light later. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so uh, have you raced a little bit with your Carrera Digital so far? Carrera Digital? Sorry, with your Collector Digital. Evolution. Jesus. It's game get... Digital. No, I haven't turned it on. I literally no? set it up. I've been filming all of that bit. There's sort of all of the opening and everything and um and i did want to <clears throat> i've just been doing a little bit of that filming and downloading the app and then it was time to cook dinner so no maybe later possibly tomorrow when there's more light um because that's your friend in videoing no one wants a dull video want it like like yes 
So that's it. So um, just moving on from, uh, sorry, just continuing on other kinds of gameplay icons you get or gameplay you get. You can do racing, you can do endurance racing, arcade racing. There's lots of different, you know, multiplayer racing. There's all different types of things you can do, whether you're on your own, small groups, large groups. It's all in here. Really good bit of kit. Um, you know, we've created a real dilemma for people as to whether they want to go Carrera <clears throat> or Skelectric for digital. Um, so, you know, it's, I think the definite difference being where Skelectric doesn't, it's not trying, it, because it, it's not trying to be the same. You can race the one in 24 on a Carrera track if that's your poison because Carrera make one in 24 scale alongside the smaller. Skelectric is predominantly one in 32 scale, which is why they have this size track. Yeah. And yes, that's a good point. There were two power supplies with the set that I've, I've got upstairs. The Platinum Pro set, right? Yeah, they send two 15 volt power supplies. Yeah, so, and how many cars in total can you run on that? Uh, on six? Yeah, six bad boys, but they send you four and four controllers and two straps for the extra controllers that you need to buy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, understood. Because somebody, like Dan says nine, but you're, you you confirm that only six cars can run on this collector, uh, on this collector digital, right? Yeah, six. Okay. Because you've cool. got, it's basically here, this is a rule of thumb with it. Uh, just get you up here. You've got these here. There's six of these. Yeah. And these relate to a different controller. Okay. All right. I understand. So what I'm going to do for when the kids come over on Saturday, because I've got a blue car, red car, yellow car, and a white car. Yeah. I'm going to set it up so that the, the color car is the color ribbon on the controller is the color on here. So it's easy for us to just know what we're playing. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So all in all, I really liked it. I think Skelectric Digital was really, really, uh, it was good to find. Now I've got more experience in the hobby and I've been around the block a couple of times. It's just nice to go back to it and actually realize that there was so much there that I didn't, dare I say appreciate at the time that I first got it to now yeah. knowing actually what's out there and what else is available this is a lot on the on on the on the table for what you buy it for absolutely yeah oh let's uh like I'm really interested to hear about your gameplay experience with it um you know and then running cars with ghost mode and all that stuff that would be kind yeah, of yeah yeah yeah, definitely something I want to hear more about. So, All right. Well, what I'll do is uh, for the next show, I'll put together a small compilation, maybe two minutes. And yeah. uh, if I don't, then don't shoot me. But I'll work <laughs> on it <laughs> uh, just to give you a snapshot of different things. Yeah, it's uh, very interesting for me. So, yeah. Um, All right. Sounds good. Like that. That'd be cool. Perfect. Right, so have you picked up any new cars in this last two weeks? Have you had the doorbell go and you've been skipping to it? Someone knocking at the door. I did Someone pick up one car. The bell. I got oh, one car did? in, yeah. You dog, what did you get? Uh, it's a 935 uh, Pink Pig Kill me now. from Sideways. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted. That's uh, delightful. I, yeah, it's uh, it's to go with my John Player Special Edition. Uh, it's a running mate for that. I thought it'd be kind of cool to have those iconic liveries there. Hey, yeah, Doug's in the house. And Davy Boy's in the house. So Slotcom Misfit says, 
Roll and Pete, will you guys do an intro to slot cars on my page, the Misfit page? Sure. There you go. Would be intro. Do it. Intro. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. Where? On YouTube or on Faceache or where? Where's what page? I There's think so many it's... pages. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just let us know when and where we'll be there. Look who's snuck in. The slot R is in the house too. Yeah, yeah. He come in a minute ago. Yeah. Cool. Good. Put Rowan to bed and he's in the house. Nice. I was having a good chat with Dave the other day about flags. <laughs> I've just probably set him off again for the next half an hour. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. So some new cars have come out in the last couple of weeks. Uh, there's a few from Skelextric. There you go. Boosh couple of f1 cars i need to speak to pendle uh, <clears throat> it doesn't seem like my thing has been registered so i'll oh. be on to that um it won't be too late don't panic i already started panicking the moment you said it no nah, just kidding. oh come on you know actually what mp like. already got these in so massimo did a did a, a review of these two f1s already really i haven't channel. seen it yeah, what was the review already, like? It was good. I mean, like there is, cool. you know what? It's a good review. Check it out. MP Slot Car Space, uh, MP Slot Cars, uh, Massimo. Uh, he did a really great review on both those F ones. Yeah, I was afraid Amazing. they were, might be too big, but when you held them up against the Carrera one thirty second scale, they actually matched up pretty good. So pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And they've got the AMGs at the bottom there. Um, and the Aston Martin, <laughs> lovely <laughs> Aston Martin, yeah. Harry just says, Uh, this I say laughing, sorry, peace thing isn't registered. <laughs> We're talking about, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because of my yeah, I uh, placed an order for Rahul, but it hasn't registered. Uh, yeah. I need to go and get it, go and get it like clocked on. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Hang on, Bo. What are you asking here, matey? On digital fuel, full fuel control track, you can only run six cars. I think six is the maximum on Arc Pro as well. Well, no, it is the maximum on Arc Pro. Yeah. Um, someone say you can get somewhere that runs nine cars. Did I see? Or was that I just saw SCX question? Digital, I think, does that? I'm not too sure. I know Oxygen, you can do uh, 12 plus on oxygen but that's more like professional level digital racing systems right Wait, yeah, yeah we don't know i don't know enough about oxygen or any of the other digital <laughs> brands to be honest and that's something that we said that we would do more research on and get back because... yeah we need someone who knows oxygen to come on and you know take us through it yeah, yeah help us sure. out you know help the masses we all need to know some oxygen in our lives yeah, I think Scott R says Oxygen can, does up to 30 cars. Um, I wonder if we could speak to Maurizio. I mean, he invented it. I'm going to reach out to him and see if we can invite him on to the show. Because it's yeah. at the right time of the day for him. It's after work. He'll be relaxing with a nice glass of Chianti. Um, just polished off a pizza. And he might come on. So I will send him an email and see if he'll come on and talk about Oxygen. Yeah, for sure. Like, um, yeah. yeah, we're always, you know, it's always good to get more information from somebody who's more knowledgeable. I think there's always so much knowledge going around. So anytime we can get smarter people than us on, on screen with us is better, don't you think? That's most people, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, so are you picking up role? anything from this page, Pete? <laughs> Sorry, say again. Are you going to pick up anything from this page? Is there any uh, part of I'm tempted on the Aston here? Martin. Yeah, I'm tempted on the yellow Aston Martin. I'm a big yellow livery fan anyway, because it's a happy color. And uh, and that is looking sweet. Yeah. Very nice. So I'm tempted on that. And Janu's ringing me, but he doesn't realize I'm streaming. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm live streaming. 
<laughs> All right, so it will like pop up in the chat in about three minutes like oh, i'm so sorry <laughs> he's all right there you go do you know if you're watching so it back, BS you're fine, cars. oh yeah he breathes oxygen no no that's not <laughs> the oxygen we're talking about steve yeah oxygen <laughs> i'll tell you what right that was a great track by um Trans DJ did uh, a track called Oxygen, and it was epic. Excellent. Oh, it was epic. But anyway, we digress. Uh, I'll probably get the yellow Aston Martin. Going what would you go Aston. for, mate, on this page? Well, you already about... know I got the two F1s. Yeah, I know. But what about what's left on the page? <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, or would you uh... just skip this page? I'll skip and have a look at this one from Slot It with this DTM car here. Have you got this? I'm skipping that one too. <laughs> All right, Sam. Well, what do you want to see then? Leads us nicely into my question. <laughs> and to anyone in the chat, what do you guys want to see as well? Uh, what's coming up? I, you know what? I haven't seen anything that's upcoming that I said, oh, you know what? I really need that right now. Let me just yeah. have a look, quick look. Sounds yeah. so. Cheers, Dave. Uh, oxygen, uh, 20 cars. 20 cars. Let's get the right comment on. There you go. Uh, yeah. You definitely have to get around drivers, overtake, undertake, do what you got to do, scream through the pit lane, get around them. No, you can't do that really, but um, you take out all your figures. I do like Yeah, so next race. weekend, uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend, I know. Yeah. Uh, Joe is coming down from Montreal and then we're going to head over to Ernie's and I know Ernie's got some stockpile of cars for me so probably check them out when I get there yeah yeah um, so what's he do get a batch and like shove one one off of everyone like that I just keep these aside in the case uh <laughs> first refusal for Rahul and then what no, he doesn't no. want will sell no, 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 no. He doesn't do that. He's a man. I don't think so. uh, <laughs> He's but, a man. But I mean, I mean, the new NSR releases that just come out uh, are oh, yeah. really interesting. Like uh, the Alpine edition or the Alpine livery of the new Formula 22 just came out. That's Ooh, something that I need I to pick that. up to add to my... Uh, Is that my the greeny kind of livery? No, it's the blue and the pink, the BWT livery. I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> And then we have the Apple uh, Porsche 911 GT3 that came out as well from NSR. Um, that would be something. And then we also have the new Ford GT40, the red and green one. The red livery with a little touch of green on the front. I think those are the three cars that very nice uh, recently came out that uh, would probably uh, enter my collection for sure. Yeah. So here we go. Rob wants to get the slot it 190 Merc. Yeah. Did you did you get a ha your hands on the Polycar Subaru WRX, the new one that just came out? Me? No, I didn't. Um, yeah, it's like a super. It's a very minimalistic car, but it's, it seems to be done really well. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's something that. I would like to see probably when I get to the UK Slot Car Fest, I'll probably take a look at that if it's there. Yeah, Dan wants yeah. to get the new CLK from um, Revo Slots. Is so, it new? One? Yeah, uh, I don't know, but Dave Slots are like eek. <laughs> uh, I know that the Porsche GT ones came out from Revo Slots. Okay, but I didn't see any new CLK come out. Right. So, I know they showcased an old CLK, which was the military green Warstein edition, which is no longer available. Which I would snap up in a heartbeat if it, if I did see it. Um, yeah, but yeah. So <clears throat> Rob's just mentioning he needs to heat and eat. Come on, mate, you're in the valley. It's the place is full of coal. Just go and shovel some out of the back garden, straight into the fire. Boosh. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Cool. Let's steam in. Yeah, you got me looking at cars now, Pete. It's your fault. Oh, uh, really? Well, do you wanna, yeah. Have you got something in mind? What are you thinking? 
that pole no, no, shot. I was just, looking, I was just nice. looking through the pendle slot because, um, oh, you know. Failed. You, failed. Yeah, I failed. I failed. Clear I your failed. cash. Get your, great, get, get your credit card numbers out <laughs> of your cash. Clear your cash. Delete that. And then, yeah. in fact, give give your credit cards to your mum. Yeah, <laughs> I know. The other night, uh, slot, uh, Sunday Slot Cards was unboxing the... Uh, the new hall and they started carrying Skelectric as well. So yeah. Oh really? It's getting, yeah, it's getting tempting on my okay. <laughs> almost so many levels. So it's pretty cool. Well he takes out the, the importing cost, doesn't he? The courier cost. Yeah. Um yeah, so I believe there's a new distributor in Canada for slot cars. So yeah, that's okay. why everyone's yeah, it's kinda cool. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's so everyone's up in hopefully their game our though. supply is upped. And we get more slot cars on a timely manner in Canada. I highly doubt it, and I won't hold my breath, but I can, I can wish for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sounds right. That looks like the challenge has been the gauntlet has been thrown down for the new sheriff in town. Sort out your stock and your supply chain, and you got a customer for life. Is the uh, underlying message I'm getting there from Rahul here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, well, Tony, well, you've not missed it. You're not. We're still chatting up to Luke Banter. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. You've just come in from the shed. <laughs> okay, cool. What have you been doing? I right dare we ask. So there's a question here. Are fly cars well built? Um, do you have any fly cars, Pete? Yeah, I've got one in my hand right now. Is this? fly or is this yeah this is fly from memory yeah this is fly i'm going with it uh yeah story of my life i bought the wrong one <laughs> so <laughs> you know why 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 do you list these things in the club as a as a car to you can race but in my experience i bought the fly lancia but i didn't realize like um like uh scale auto they do a home version and they do a race version yeah so i bought the home version brilliant but it's a nice car it's uh really nicely let's show you it here what am i doing being selfish uh, so, can you not just buy the chassis for that separately i don't know probably but i was so miffed i've resented it and it's just been look it's probably got a layer of dust on it <laughs> it's dead to me so I bought it out, see if I can rekindle any feelings with it. But, you know, it's touch and go, mate. It's taking a lot of sessions. <laughs> yeah. We'll get there, buddy. You and me, we'll get there. <laughs> Sorry, it was just some slot car Is therapy, that why mate. that scan is there? So you can <laughs> rekindle your friendship with your slot cars. I see how it is. That's it. Well, this is why I do the Wired on Wednesdays. The member stream I do, as you know. It's like yeah. to just, you know, to have that time one on one with the slot cars, you know, and be, you know, yeah. connected to them. And but this one here has been problematic since its start, you know, so we've had to put in extra time together. We're getting through it. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm glad you're getting oh, through it. I'm I'm glad you're getting some sort of therapy you <laughs> said. Oh, I love it. Uh, you know, but that's that's what we get out of it, isn't it? That's the the escapism that we have. With um, yeah, I'll go with that. What Doug's saying about Tony's gantry is looking amazing. Tony is something else when it comes to scenery and slot building and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so Janu is on, and he says, "I see a Subaru car with a Ferrari engine." Yeah, Janu, I'm live that. streaming, buddy. This is the chap who was ringing me a minute ago. Yeah. Well done, mate. So I don't right know what then. you're talking about. Which Subaru car with the Ferrari engine? I have no idea. Anyway. No, I've not got a Subaru on here. Uh, which one? Give me uh, top, middle, bottom, left, right. Hit me up. And uh, we'll start telling you some opinions. Oh, no. Here we go. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it goes, oh, no. <laughs> well, well, 
Well, so firstly, firstly and foremostly, our opinions are our own. We speak for ourselves, not for anyone, especially not for the hobby. Ourselves. You and I, me, myself. Right, right. <laughs> Who are you talking for, Rahul? Let's be really clear. For myself. Me, myself, Anyone and else? I. Anyone no. else? No. Sure? Okay, 100%. cool. So am I. Yeah. I'm speaking for me, not you, me. And yeah. uh, that's important. That whatever you watch here is just two old codgers having banter. It doesn't represent the view of the actual hobby. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just to sort of, you know, just positively, there's no red lights this week. So there is a green light, though. So if you want to find out who's rocking it, stay tuned. Yeah, uh, 100%. No red lights for the first time ever. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I think... Anyway, Slav says strap in, guys. Yeah. Slav Valley Racing's... We... Go on. <laughs> Slav Valley Racing's opinions are like deep. <laughs> <Everyone has one. laughs> we can say our souls. We can say it. It's past nine at night yeah. here. We're past the watershed. I don't know if you'd all... melt. You'll melt away, you know. I don't know, Pete. I have to be careful. On my channel, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch the digital racing, you'll understand. We don't care on my channel. Yeah, no, we're past the watershed here. So <laughs> yeah, you can say right. all sorts of balls, all sorts of stuff. Good. Um, right, so, Amber right. Light. This might take a moment or three to uh, explain why we've given an Amber Light to um, all brands of manufacturers. All of them. Slot cars, right? We're talking about slot cars here. Slot car manufacturers. The cap fits everyone, so you best wear it. <clears throat> um, do you want to go first, or shall I? Uh, you go first, and then I'll I'll top up. Um, okay, so we were thinking about like different things that we're just not feeling it. You know, we're just not. Well, I say we. Our opinions are our own, but we share the same opinion sometimes, and this is one of them where we just want to know what the score is because there's there's if you're new in the hobby and you're naive and you see a car on pendle you're gonna buy it because you might not realize that you can get let's take a gt40 for example it's a really popular car across all brands have done a gt40 right so you can get lucky and buy a skeletric one or you might not get to that page. You might start looking on the NSR page and you might buy one of them, but you don't realize that it's for different brands of experience. So I think, you know, like coffee strength where you get strength one, which is like Nat's piss and you get strength five, which is like me on a Sunday morning. Um, I think that you should have like a difficulty level or an experience level uh on the box you know like they're quite happy to put cigarettes and alcohol warnings on boxes like you know because it's they're trying to whitewash history they should also put an experience strength level on there so it's like this is a race spec car this needs a number five because you're expected to know to get that going or whatever and from my perspective is also is how difficult it is to build a, from a white kit point of view because you know i'm big on building white kits and building kits of cars two reasons a because i like putting it together and seeing the end result it gives me good therapy but b it's a lot cheaper to buy those cars and build them so yeah call me the original pikey but yeah i'll save 30 bucks to build a car to save 30 quid and i get nice therapy from it why can't you support that if you're going to do that with instructions? There's no transparency. And the other thing is, why can't we have some generic screws? You know, why can't the grub screw fit the same size across all brands? That would be genius. Seriously, even mobile phones are going back to like it used to be with Nokia, with one cable fits all. So with Seagate charging, again, it's just become more transparent, you know. So that's this my thing is that, I want to know a bit more about what I'm getting into if I'm completely new 
Well, it yeah. just comes down to consumer transparency, right? Like you, you when you go to a store, um, my main concern with this was, I mean, we've been talking about toy and hobby brands and slot cards for a while now. Exactly. But there's like no that. clarity on a box that tells you, okay, this one needs tuning or this one needs extra work or, you know, because like I said, it's not like I can go into any store and pick up a slot car, right? Uh, you have to go to this dedicated hobby shop. Now, majority of us, even in Toronto, there's only like maybe two hobby shops that I know, and they're not very close to me either. Um, and, you know, yeah, if I can go into a hobby shop, and, and this is where I say knowledge transfer, you know, um, if you're racing and you're in the hobby and in, you're in stock cars and you're racing and you're going to a racetrack, you have knowledge transfer from everyone around you. Because when you enter into that race, track environment there's a lot of other racers everyone has different experiences and you transfer knowledge just like wargaming when you play in tournaments there's a lot of knowledge transfer that happens but when you majority of us build our own basement tracks right so we go out there we buy a set we put it in our basement we build it up and then we find a car that maybe the brand that our racetrack came from does not make and we want that brand to run on a, we want that car to run on that track and we go out there and we go on to a uh, e-commerce web store and we pick up a car and we put it in our shopping cart but nowhere in the descriptions or anything does it say okay this car maybe requires a little bit more work or this car needs a little bit of xyz tlc right now yep. the same could be done in there's another and world we appreciate I, it we appreciate that you should have different levels of uh you know products that require different levels of application when you buy it we get that we we like that because we buy complexity but yeah. carry on yeah yeah so i mean like like i said it's just uh it would be nice to just have a little bit more information on either the websites or in general on the boxes themselves when the cars yeah. when you get a car it says like i'll take a I'll take another example. You did coffee, which is very, everyone understands, but it's not hobby related. I'll take something called Gundam. You know, it's a Gunpla, uh, build your own kids kind of robots. They come in different grades. And it says on the boxes, what grade you're going to buy. It's the perfect grade, a high grade, uh, and, you know, and every grade level has its own form of build complexity to it. Right. Um, I just feel like that. Yeah. Like, um, I feel that that is lacking in the slot car world, um, you know, and you can see a Skeletric car and you can see an NSR car and you might think they're the one and the same because they're both slot cars in your head. You know, there's mm -hmm. a box of different manufacturers are different, but no one, no, no one on the box does it say, you know, this is an advanced system or this has an yeah. advanced motor and, product has anything like that. And that right. leads into what Billy's saying here. Uh, he says they won't sell as much if they said it was difficult. But I don't agree. Well, in a nice way, Billy, because if you look at Lego and some yeah. of those big uh, Millennium Falcon kits or Death Star kits where they're like they're like 3,000, 12,000, 15,000 piece kits and they sell by the millions because people want to buy that complexity because they're they're either very enthusiastic about what they're doing and they want to take it up and up and up and challenge themselves, which is what we're doing. We, we're taught from a young age to challenge ourselves uh, and strive for better, right? You know, positive message and all that. And yeah, but this is it, Dave. It's not about whether we're thinking three or five good. If you buy one and then realize you're two or five, then yeah, granted, your first rodeo, you don't know what strength coffee or what strength experience you need until you bought one. It's a bit like uh, vaping. When you try vaping, you get those different strengths and they go, oh, if you smoke 20 a day, you need 20 milligrams and you smoke it and literally rips your throat out. It's like smoking a camel's toe. And uh, you're like, oh, I need the 12 milligrams. And you would get rid of that and or come back to it in a year when you've got more experience so i think yeah absolutely there is that someone's uh incompetent competence they feel that they're better than they actually are until they get onto that particular brand of slot car and struggle to get it going or whatever um but yeah so 
I think. Yeah. Well, I just don't know. I, I like from my perspective, it's like you know, um, right. something that I think Scalato is doing right now, which is kind of cool, is the you know they have the home series chassis, they have the uh, R series chassis, and then they have the RS chassis. That three different chassis, same car comes out in three different chassis, and, and you can choose if it's home racing. It's much simpler. It's got less tuning capability, and it goes up in levels. And the reason for that is just gives you some sort of clarity when you approach that system and say, okay, what's the difference? You can actually ask that question. But when you're on a Pendle website, you know, like I do, and I was looking at the descriptions, and it's nowhere does it say, okay, this this car may require tuning, this car may require X, Y, Z to in order to run correctly, right? So when I buy a car and I see it on a shelf and I see it in a box, I expect to take the car out and run it. If I was a newbie, like in general, like, you know, you walk into a shop or you walk and you just imagine you're given a set for Christmas and you fell in love with slot cars. And the first thing you wanted to do was buy the favorite, your favorite car. You go and research it on the website, on the web, because you don't know where that set come from. It came as a gift. So you don't necessarily yeah. know the slot car shop that it came from. You just know, oh, this was a gift. And now you go online and you look for this car. And the next thing that pops up is, hey, this is a GT40. It happens to be a scale auto, for instance, and then you pick it up and then it comes home and you're like, what the hell is this? This doesn't look like the car that I'm used to. Yeah, but I've done that. Yeah. I've done that. Yeah. When I started and... racing, I've done that. And I've and, and and I've bought the wrong cars. Like this this Lance here that I'm going through uh, more detailed therapy with. We're making good progress. Um, you know, it's <laughs> Uh, exactly and car. that's not we're not we're you not know, saying I, that this is I'm something not saying that i got the wrong car sorry <laughs> it's having a go at me in the background here um uh, yeah and i like everyone needs to understand like um we're, we're just i'm just trying to think like a newbie like a newbie perspective right because uh and you that's don't basically know what, uh, yeah that's basically the way know. i approach it right um it's very okay, difficult to tell the beginner. difference right yeah uh so yeah. that's why we we did include that slide i think transparencies from manufacturers doesn't mean like every manufacturer needs to tell you everything that's going on in their manufacturing process that's not what we're saying we're just saying when you release a car just give us a little bit of clarity as to what is that car meant to do or where is it's meant to be played with and who's supposed to play with it kind of thing by just putting some sort of rating system on the cars if possible right uh, i'm i'm not saying we're going to solve this question in one day but i just feel like that is something that leads to a lot yeah. of like um you know it's like dan's saying dan's agreeing with us here saying novice amateur intermediate acknowledgement on the packaging i think that's over the you know different they're not just off the obvious elephant in the room that's been going on the last few weeks but just other bits and bobs that we've seen and noticed like thunder slot don't really come with a lot of backup and that's a technical car and a very expensive car as well yeah um so it's this you know it, it's across the board and that is what we just wanted to sort of bring to the party was to say we just want a little bit more detail about the cars you know you selling expensive bits of toys give us a bit more marketing on it you know go to town on it rather than just images give us some tech specs give us you know recommendations on what other types of tires are, would go with it and just you know just just be yeah. a bit more um representative of the cars that you're making yeah and i think uh, everyone has their strengths and weaknesses in the <clears throat> hobby like we said in the very beginning one of my first live streams ever last year was the many layers of this hobby you you may be a hobbyist that just likes to model and create slot car tracks you know maybe your yeah. hobbies that just like to change the track every month and it's fun to run different cars on different track layouts that in itself is a hobbyist in my opinion because uh nowhere does it say that you have to be an expert racer or you have to learn how to tune cars to drive you know um to be part of the hobby um nowhere does it say that you have to be an expert modeler or expert painter it's just about many layers and everyone's gonna have their own place where they feel comfortable uh, i just think from a manufacturing level you can help us out by being a little bit more upcoming with uh, or upfront with what you're presenting to us on packaging so a simple sticker 
solves a lot of issues, I think. So something like that yeah. would be pretty cool to see. And that's would you put this sticker on it? Not everyone is ready to cook on the barbecue. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. Brilliant, Dan. Right, okay. So that was the amber light, orange light, whatever you want to call it. Are you ready for the green light? Yes. Yes. We've got a green light this week. I feel like we've turned a corner. No red lights tonight. Boosh. Yep. Um, Come on, Aid. So, yeah, we wanted to shout out Aid. He's been releasing a lot of videos lately. Um... And it's very laid back. Uh, I'll give you my two cents first, Pete, and then you can take over, right? Yeah, yeah, cool. So yeah. I watched cool. Aid, uh, Aid uh, put wire up some LED lights the other night. And oh. um, I mean, he did it so nonchalantly. It was really cool. <laughs> uh, like, he, he, it was like, you know, and, and, I, and I think that's what, that's what the beauty of it. Like, he was. Yeah, it was just very genuine. Uh, the the content is really cool. Uh, the technical level and expertise in his wiring and everything is pretty awesome too. So uh, good on Aid and uh, great to have him as part of the hobby and really like giving giving us a really good show on what he does and in the behind the scenes and tinkering and putting together and creating some cool stuff. So way to go, Aid. Yes, I'd uh, second that in a heartbeat. Uh, I love it. It's just a laid back because uh, he's a Yorkshireman. So he speaks in that Yorkshire accent, re, you know, right down like with the uh, normal people and that. And uh, and he delivers it in a, such a softly mannered, spoken way that uh, you just watch, he's watching it. And the funny thing for me is his dog has got a squeaker toy, exactly the same squeaker sound as my dog squeaker toy. So I'm watching it on the telly, like catching up with what he's doing. Uh, what was I? I'm a few, I'm a few videos behind on everyone because everyone, right? Hats off to you all, uh, are doing an absolute sterling job of bringing content out. Honestly, rakes of it going on. It's fantastic. So keep that coming up. Give me a hard time of keeping up. Um, but so I'm a few behind. I'm just watching it now. I'm yet to get to the Dunlop Bridge with the LEDs in it, but I'm so excited to get there because I've seen clips and bits of it. Oh, it looks like next level. And you're right, he is, because he's laid back and he just knows what he's doing. He's like, dish, 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 dish. And, yeah. and he gives you that belief that actually, I can do that as well. And yeah. that makes, that's a great video, is when you've come away from watching it thinking, I can actually do that. Right, Amazon, where's my links? So... <clears throat> Yeah, good on you, Aid. Really good effort, by the way. Don't feel under any pressure to have to like release stuff. Just you release it when you're ready or when you're doing something, and that is good enough for everyone, mate. Brilliant content. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So like that's the that. thing. Well, we wanted to shout out Aid. I think he's doing a great job. Uh, as as are a lot of people, by the way. There's so much content, like you said, right. and it's it's rough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, Bronson. I love it. I haven't got it down here. Uh, my one dog's toy is called Frenchy, which makes that that sound. And uh, it gets him. He just literally bolt upright on the settee when he is the sound. Starts trotting around the TV like, where is it? Who's got my toy? Ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, you've started something, Aid. Yeah, so pretty cool. Um, and and like I said, uh, the other person I'm watching a lot is uh, Slot Journal, um, <laughs> because they're putting together. He's putting together his track as well. So pretty cool stuff. And Harry and his beautiful rock climbing adventures, which uh, has sparked some interest on our level here with all my friends, because uh, we've been talking yes. about doing mini crawlers for a while. So yeah, definitely some awesome hobby stuff coming out um and yeah there's lots of good stuff coming out there so thank you guys how's your well, how's your yeah. terrain going because you was building uh you was doing some rockery uh some cliffs or something the last time we were chatting well it's uh it's there <laughs> i haven't uh, like, well, 
I uh, no, I haven't because I started painting. I started painting some magnetic racing kits. So because yeah. we have so many of them assembled, um, so I got on the stream with uh, Joe last Saturday, and I started painting, and I got that bug going. So I'll be painting up okay. a couple, about three or four kits. But I'm gonna do them live, so I'm just gonna turn on my live impromptu and stop painting. That's how I'm gonna do it. Um, well, I think you used to do it. this with Soul on a Sunday. Yeah, I was thinking and about you stop doing it. Back. Yeah, fire it um, back up, mate, because I used to enjoy that. Get loads of techniques and like dry brush in or how to spray, uh, you know, from the uh, top on a model to get the shade in. Yeah, these tips are invaluable. Don't feel yeah. like you're repeating yourself because I'll forget and then I get reminded on the next one. So works for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to steal some of uh, Slot Journal's cushion material techniques. Um, you know, it's really funny because Harry and Slot Journal both did the technique with the plaster, um, the roll, the, the casting uh, plaster that you can cut up sheets and then wet them. Plaster and, Paris type. Kind of thing, yeah. I don't yeah. know what to call that stuff anymore. Um, but it's anyway, like a like, it's really cool because it's really cost effective. And that's what I really like about the terrain stuff. You can do it out of really cheap, cost effective materials and create these wonderful landscapes really quickly. So, yeah, yeah. awesome. Uh, plastic cloth. That's it. That's right. Sunday slot cards answered for me. So, plastic cloth indeed. Uh, so, it was kind of cool to see all that. And then, um, yeah, in general, that was cool. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say, man. It's been it's been a ride. Boom. We have a lot of racing coming up. Uh, my yeah. my my friends are all back in the groove of racing, and um, yeah, we had a couple of races Excellent. last night, so it should be fun. Yeah, awesome. So I tell you what, we're going to wrap up in about a few minutes, about five minutes or so, uh, as we got through our traffic lights, everyone. Well, we Which didn't ask was... the audience if they had any traffic lights. They can oh put up. Oh my god, they're red opening a can of worms. Red, Do not uh... ask this audience what they think. I think we should. Oh, okay, go for it. So, yeah, anybody want to have any red lights to sh uh, to give out? You can even give us red lights. I don't care. Uh, be yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, red, amber, green lights. Uh, go for it. You have a couple Got minutes. Got a t-shirt on. Well. Subliminal programming. Green, green, green. <laughs> Green hat, Rahul. See, it's all going on. Uh... Easy. It's not that kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, black light. Uh, no, my yes. glasses. It's called black light. Yes. Oh. You didn't remind me to talk about this, <laughs> but uh, I'm still waiting on now. I've got a right to the PR department at Skelectric because I asked the marketing department what the official lineup was with Mike Ashley who, if you're not in the UK and don't know who Mike Ashley is, he's a retail magnate, as you would call him over the pond. Uh, and he buys up businesses that are pretty much going skin or really struggling, really struggling. And he buys shares for next to nothing. He comes in, he demolishes it, and he like he'll take something that's... He'll take parts of the business and he'll just literally stave off the rest. So... You know, my theory is, and my opinions are my own, everyone, shoot me down now. But my feeling is, I can't believe I'm going to speculate on this. This is just my thought on it, is that Hornby makes money, Airfix makes money, Poker, Skelectric and Corgi don't make money. That's how I think, perceive it. Now, out of the three that don't make money... I don't think Poker and Corgi make as much money as Skelectric. So I think they will be cut as brands, finished, gone. And I think Skelectric will be put on a, um, like a warning or a monitor or something. And then uh, for a year, and then they'll take a judgment on Skelectric as to whether they continue it. Because Mike Astley is all about a spreadsheet and a bottom line. There's no emotion about heritage or vintage or anything like that with him he's a pure businessman and you know i can understand why he's like that because do business but you know i'm on this side of the fence we want to keep the brands so yeah that's that's what i reckon cold hard facts of business 
So I will be keeping a close eye on what's happening over there in Margit, everyone. Yeah. Um, there you go. We got a black light. We haven't. We never got a black light before. No, Billy. Yeah. In the Pro Platinum set that I've got upstairs, the four cars that come with it actually have the chips fitted in them. So they they can do it. Oh, Ted's here. Ted's just got in for work, literally as we're wrapping up. Ted, mate. <laughs> so sorry, buddy. Like, you're literally coming in as we're closing the door. <laughs> Don't worry, mate. We're having a lock-in. You got in just in time. Right, pull us another one over there, love. <laughs> hey! Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Right then. So, I've got to say thanks, everyone, for showing up tonight. And thanks, everyone, for hitting the like button before you left the show. Really appreciated that. That was good fun. Uh, Rahul, always love working with you, mate. This has been a good show again. Um, and the next one in two weeks, well, keep it tuned to find out what we're going to bring you because it's going to be interesting. Well, it all depends on what comes out in the next two weeks. Yeah, I don't uh, actually so know yeah. what we're doing, so... <laughs> uh, yeah if you've got any ideas leave them in the comments as well we'll steal those and we'll use them <laughs> yeah I expect all that. oh okay. brilliant no worries thanks Rob appreciate it oh hang on hang on hold the phone Slotar's got a prediction of what the Scaly 25 catalogue's going to look like a load of Fox <laughs> or courses in it Brebbin <laughs> then they're going to have Union uh, they're going to have St George Cross liveries uh, just to get you really going. <laughs> it could be a flag loony. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Even Dan thought that was hilarious. Uh, brilliant. Yeah. Right, guys, let's uh, keep it fresh. Thanks ever so much for joining us on this slot car shenanigans. It's been good fun always. Rahul, always. see you in a couple of weeks, my man. You take yeah, it easy, guys. Sure. Ciao, right, ciao, guys. darlings. Take care. Have fun.